there are approximately 300,000 identified flowering plant species. Their diversity in morphology is remarkable and is afforded by millions of years of evolution. They can attribute their success to the way that they reproduce. Their sexual organs develop inside ornately designed flowers and their sexuality is flaunted to the wind and animals. Flowers function to allow the mixing of genes between eggs and sperm cells to produce new embryonic plants. You may ask, how does this happen? At the apex of each growing stem, there are meristematic cells that will give rise to new primordia that will develop into leaves. When specific genes are expressed in the primordia, flowers will develop instead of leaves. Four whorls make up a flower. These are the sepals, petals, stamens, and carpels. The stamens are the male organs and the carpels are the female organs. When flowers are produced, the plant is about to undergo an alternation of generations. This means that the genetic content is going to change as new cells are formed within the male and female parts of the flower. What do we mean by this? In most plants, the cells of the flower will contain two sets of chromosomes, a maternal set and a paternal set. These cells are genetically described as being diploid because they have two sets of chromosomes. Specialized cells in the male and female organs will undergo meiosis to make haploid cells called spores. Haploid cells contain only one set of chromosomes coming from either parent. Each spore has a unique combination of parental genes in its single set of chromosomes. Each spore has the capability of dividing by mitosis to form a multicellular haploid tissue contained within the male and female organs. We refer to the multicellular haploid stage as the gametophyte, which means gamete producing plant. Specialized cells in the haploid gametophyte will become the sperm or the egg cells. Where are the sperm and eggs produced inside the flower? At the tip of each stamen, there is a specialized structure known as the anther. Inside each anther, there are specialized diploid cells called microsporocytes, which will undergo meiosis to form tetrads of microspores. Each microspore has a unique combination of genes on a haploid set of chromosomes. A microspore will divide by mitosis to give rise to two cells contained inside the microspore wall. This becomes the pollen grain when the two cells become differentiated to form the tube cell and the generative cell. The generative cell will divide forming two sperm cells. Altogether, the pollen grain now has three cells, the tube cell and two sperm cells. This is the mature male gametophyte because it is haploid, multicellular, and contains the male gametes of the plant. In contrast, the eggs are produced inside the carpels. The carpels are typically fused to form the female organ, the pistil. At the base of the pistil, there is a specialized structure known as the ovary. Inside the ovary, there are many ovules. 
Within each ovule, a specialized diploid cell called a megasporocyte will undergo meiosis to form four haploid megaspores. Three megaspores will die, and one will undergo three mitotic divisions to form seven instead of eight cells. The central cell contains two nuclei because the cytoplasm does not divide during the last mitotic division. This multicellular seven-celled tissue is the female gametophyte and is also known as the embryo sac. A single egg will form inside each embryo sac or female gametophyte. In order for seeds to form, a sperm and an egg must fuse inside the ovule to form a diploid cell known as the zygote. Pollen grains containing two sperm cells are carried to the receptive stigma of the pistil on the currents of the wind or the hairy surfaces of animals. Pollen grains with a suitable genetic composition will be allowed to germinate on the stigma and the pollen tube will grow through the style of the pistil until it reaches an ovule in the ovary. Both sperm cells are involved in the sexual reproduction process. One sperm cell will fuse with the egg cell to form the diploid zygote. The second sperm cell will fuse with the diploid central cell to form a triploid cell. This process is known as double fertilization. The zygote will undergo mitosis to form the diploid embryonic plant, while the central cell will undergo mitosis to form the triploid endosperm. Endosperm serves as storage of nutrients for the embryo. Both embryo and endosperm develop inside the seed. An ovule develops into a single seed. Many seeds develop inside the ripened ovary that develops into the fruit. The seed carries the new genotype within the embryo coming from the unique blend of maternal and paternal genes carried in the egg and sperm cells, while the endosperm nourishes the embryonic plant during germination. When the embryo breaks out of the seed coat, germination has occurred and the new plant divides by mitosis in order to grow. Each diploid cell in the plant has the genes to make spores and we call this generation of cells the sporophyte, which means spore producing plant. When flowers are produced, the plant will undergo the alternation of generations and genetic diversification occurs once again. Alternation of sporophytic with gametophytic tissue inside the flower is brought about by three genetic transformation processes. Meiosis allows for the mixing of genes between the two sets of chromosomes so that each haploid cell contains a unique combination of genes on its set of chromosomes. Genetic change can occur within each multicellular stage because during mitosis there is always a chance of mutations occurring as DNA is replicated. The random fusion of eggs and sperm cells during fertilization will result in each new embryonic plant having a unique genetic constitution. As a result, genetic diversification occurs from one sporophyte generation to the next. Unlike plants, humans do not produce spores and multicellular haploid tissues during their life cycle. One needs to study the evolutionary history of plant life on Earth in order to appreciate the origin of the alternation of the gametophyte and sporophyte tissue in the life cycle of plants.